Guys, I have a fantastic solution for you guys today that I'm going to feature as far as monitoring. It is fast. It is easy to set up. It can monitor uptime, service availability, applications, kings, and some data services that you may want to monitor. This solution is a free and open source monitoring solution. And as you guys know, I've been on a roll on free and open source monitoring solutions as of late, trying out many different solutions in the home lab in 2023. So you guys are going to want to stick around for this one this is a awesome solution it is cool it is free it is open source and we're going to see how to quickly deploy it in the home lab Many monitoring solutions try to do everything and the kitchen sink when it comes to monitoring. And there are several fantastic monitoring solutions out there. And I have featured several of those on previous videos. However, the beauty of the monitoring solution I'm going to show you guys today is in its simplicity, in its beauty, and in the features that it does present in terms of monitoring. The solution is called Uptime Kuma. Uptime Kuma is a free and open source solution that you can clone down from a GitHub repository as well as just simply pull the Docker container if you want to deploy the solution in your own Docker environment. It provides the basics of monitoring in the way that you want to consume it. Easy to read dashboards that let you know if your services are either up or down and it monitors most of the basic services that you would want to run in either a lab environment or production. You have access to HTTP monitors, TCP port monitors, ping, DNS records, push alerts, Steam game servers, Docker containers. As the description mentions, it is fancy, it's reactive, and it's a fast UI as we're going to see. We're going to step through just how simple and easy it is to deploy Uptime Kuma. And like many of my favorite applications that are run in the home lab environment, Uptime Kuma is a Docker container that you can quickly and easily spin up as an application in your home lab. And you can literally be monitoring in a few seconds after you spin up the container with just a bit of configuration as we are going to see. So let's dive into how we deploy Uptime Kuma. The process to install Uptime Kuma is extremely easy due to the Docker installation method as posted by the developer. So we can simply copy the Docker run command and then navigate to our SSH session or console session, whichever you have, to your Linux host. I have an SSH session to an Ubuntu 2204 virtual machine that is serving as my Docker container host. So I'm just going to paste the Docker run command. As we can see, we're simply running Docker in daemon mode. We're restarting always. The port for Uptime Kuma is 3001. So not likely that you will have a conflict with that port. However, uh, make adjustments as needed with that. We are also mounting a persistent volume that by default is simply Uptime Kuma mounted to the app data folder inside the container. We're naming it Uptime Kuma and we are pulling the latest image for the Uptime Kuma application. So I'm simply going to execute the Docker run command. It does not find the container locally. So it is simply pulling the latest container from the repository. At this point, we simply wait for the container to download and deploy. And as you can see, that was literally 20 or 25 seconds of pulling the container and spinning up the new container. So we're browsing out to port 3001 on our Docker container host. And now we have the expected splash screen for Uptime Kuma. The first process that we need to complete is simply creating a username for our solution as well as a password that we're going to use for that initial account. So I am just simply creating a user called admin. We're populating the password and we're simply clicking the create button. And after creating your initial account, we get the default dashboard for Uptime Kuma. 
Now that we have Uptime Kuma deployed, we can log into the interface and start configuring, not only monitoring, but we can also start looking at alerts and we can begin setting up the alert notifications as we want those on which monitors we want to alert on in Uptime Kuma. Uptime Kuma is what I would consider to be a modern take on notifications. As we are going to see with the notification services, there are some 90 notification services that you can take advantage of with Uptime Kuma. So let's log in, set up our first monitors, and look at alerting. One of the first things that you notice about Uptime Kuma is the simple and easy to use interface that is presented right from the start once you deploy the solution. I know many monitoring solutions right after you deploy them, if you're not familiar with how they work, you have to almost read a knowledge base article to create your first monitor. And that's not the case with Uptime Kuma. As you can see, you've got a simple and easy button in the upper left hand corner of the interface that simply says add new monitor. So let's click on the add new monitor button. And we are again presented with a very intuitive interface and dialog box of sorts that allows us to create this first simple and easy monitor that we can use in the environment. So if you look at the monitor type at the very top, you can click the drop down box and you get a feel for the types of monitoring that Uptime Kuma is able to do. With Uptime Kuma, you're not going to find built in monitors for VMware vSphere, Proxmox, Hyper-V, cloud monitoring, and those types of things with Uptime Kuma. So it's not as powerful as uh, Zabbix or CheckMK or uh, PRTG, which I showcased to you guys in my previous video. However, I don't feel like that is the strength of Uptime Kuma. So all of our tools, we realize their strengths, their weaknesses, their use cases. Uptime Kuma is very well suited for web applications, uptime monitoring for pings or DNS or other services where you simply want to know, is that service available? Is that host up and running where I can ping it? Or in the case of the data services that you see at the bottom of the dialog box, such as Microsoft SQL Server, you can actually have a query that executes every so often. If you have a table that you want to pull a few rows from that table, it's really well suited for those types of use cases. So again, you're not going to find, hey, let me add my vSphere infrastructure and it's going to pull data store information and virtual machine latency. You're not going to find that type of monitoring. However, again with the services that you see listed it's an awesome solution and i think it's a great way to bolster other solutions that you may be using in the lab uh, because I, I just really like the way uptime kuma presents the information and allows you to create these simple and easy dashboards so i'm going to click just the ping monitor type and we're simply going to enter in one of my esxi hosts in my environment also you have notification options so you can uh, set your heartbeat interval how often it's going to be checked you can retry a certain number of times if you want to not necessarily send a notification the very first time that it's down however you want to maybe try it three times and if it's down after those three times then you start sending notifications. You can also resend notifications with this setting as well. It also has the concept of tags as well in there for additional metadata. So let's save this and let's see what it looks like. Immediately after we add the monitor, we can see that we've got a green bar that indicates that this host is up and running. And we also are starting to get ping metrics, which after we have more data to work with, we're going to be able to change the granularity of the view as well. How wide of a view we want to look at or how pinpointed we want to look in this graph. So this is going to start populating. And I have another environment that has been running for a while that I will show you guys in just a moment. If we go back into our first monitor that we have created, let's look at this setup notification button. As easy as it is to set up the monitor itself, it's just as easy to set up notifications. And I really like that as well. 
Uh, again, other solutions, you have to really hunt and look to see, okay, where do I set up the notification service? And then I have to navigate to another place in the solution to actually configure a rule to fire off that notification. That's not the case with Uptime Kuma. Everything is all self-contained, which is really fantastic. As you can see on the setup notification dialog box, we've got notification type. We've got, again, a drop down box that we will see the wealth of notifications. This is over 90 plus notification services that are included in Uptime Kuma. I'm going to select the email SMTP and I'm going to simply name this alert, Cloud Local Alerts, and we're going to set up a host name and the port we enter here no security uh, from email we're going to to say kuma local and here i'm actually entering in the uh, special email address that i am using to then push notifications from mailrise to pushover so i've got the pushover at mailrise.xyz uh, custom subject kuma alert and we're going to say that this notification is enabled by default and you can also test the notification so i'm going to click the uh, test button and as you guys heard the bell hopefully that means that i received the notification one of the cool things that i feel like uptime kuma can really do that many other applications it seems like you have to jump through hoops to get this type of monitoring is Uptime Kuma allows you to easily monitor Docker containers with just a bit of configuration. In fact, on our Docker container host, as I'm going to show you guys, all you need to do is just add a couple of configuration lines in your Docker config file to allow that remote monitoring. And then in Uptime Kuma, it's a simple configuration that we note that we are monitoring a Docker container. And this enables Uptime Kuma to immediately notify us if we have a Docker container that exits for whatever reason or goes into a crash loop. So it's a great solution for monitoring modern applications that you may have running inside of containers in your lab environment or production environments. To monitor a remote Docker host, there are just a couple of changes to that host that we need to make to allow a remote system to be able to pull and speak to the Docker daemon remotely. And one of those changes that we need to make in the Etsy Docker folder is we need to add a file called daemon.json. And if we look at this, we can see what the contents of the file actually are. So basically, we're just simply specifying that we can remotely access this host over port 2375. So we're going to exit and save out of that. And then also, we want to navigate to the folder Etsy systemd system docker.service.com. D. If that folder does not exist, you just simply create it. Inside that folder, we need to create an override.comp file. In that file, we are adding the parameter for a config file and pointing our Docker service to that daemon.json file to receive that information for the remote management piece. When we restart our Docker daemon, then it will allow these remote connections to the Docker daemon from our Uptime Kuma host. Now that we have the Docker daemon configured for remote access, we can now add our Docker container host and set up a monitor to a specific container using Uptime Kuma. So I'm going to add new monitor. We're going to select Docker container. I'm going to create a friendly name for the Docker container. We're going to monitor a Prometheus container name. And on the setup Docker host button, we're going to click that. We're going to set up a connection to container 03. We're going to now use the TCP slash HTTP connection. And we're going to change this to the IP address of that container host. We're going to test the connection. And as we can see, we've connected successfully and it's pulling the correct number of containers from that specific container host. So I'm going to click the save button and now we can set up monitoring for that specific container. As you can see, we've got everything saved. We've got our notification configured correctly and now we can simply click save. As we can see, our monitoring of our Prometheus container on container host 03 
is up and running. What I'm going to do is stop the Prometheus container. The Prometheus container is now stopped. Now we can see with the next poll interval, the uptime Kuma monitor has correctly identified that this particular container is now down. And we can see if we look at the dashboard messages, we see that the container state is exited. Now, if I go back and I start the Prometheus container, we will note on the next monitor interval that we should see uptime Kuma note that the container is back up and running. And now we see that it has correctly identified the container is back up and running. And as you can see, if we look at the dashboard, we can see after the container state is exited, we now have a notice that the container is back up and running. That is awesome. One of the other really cool things that we can do with uptime Kuma is we can create dashboards of particular services that we want to present in a specific dashboard. So maybe you have certain infrastructure that is backing a particular application and you want to group those monitoring resources together, you can easily do that in Uptime Kuma and create a special URL for monitoring just those services and even present those services to end users. If you want to present a dashboard showing all of those relevant services and that they are up and running and performing as expected. I have now hopped over to an Uptime Kuma instance where I have added many more monitors to the solution just to give us a few more items to play around with. If you notice all the way at the top, there is a status pages button that we can click. So if we click status pages, we will see the ability to add a new status page. I've already added one just in testing, but let's go through this. If I click the new status page, you will note that we can name the page, we can create a slug for the page, and then we can add services to this status page. And one of the first things I'm going to do is swap to the dark theme to get that eye bleeding white gone. So as you can notice, we can add a new group or we can just simply add monitors here. So I'm going to click a couple of monitors that I want to add. So now we've added the monitors that we want to include in this particular status page. And as you can note, you can style this in a custom way, add custom CSS, but we're just simply going to save. And we are taken immediately to this custom Home Lab 2 dashboard, including the services specifically that we want to present to this particular status page. One of the really cool things as well, if you are creating this for end users, is you can actually create an instant. So if there were a particular downtime event, you can note that in the incident. So we're just going to post the incident and if we save it, we will notice if we go back to the status page, the current status is displayed. And then we also have the incident information uh, displayed at the top. What do you think about Uptime Kuma? I think it really brings the cool flair back to monitoring and allows us to have modern monitoring dashboards that we can use in the lab environment to group certain services together or just get a great overview of all of the services that you may have running in your server rack or your lab in general. So hats off to Lou Islam or Louie Lam. I'm not sure how he pronounces that with the GitHub ID, but Lou, thank you for this tremendously awesome project that you have contributed contributed to the community and that gives us an awesome solution to monitor our services. Well, as always guys, I'm Brandon Lee. If you like this video, please do smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done that already. Well, take care guys, stay safe out there. Please do keep home labbing and I will see you guys soon.